Hi, my name's Chris Johnson. I'm one of the authors of Web Development Recipes. I'm here today to show you how easy it is to implement one of our recipes. Today we're going to take a look at displaying information with endless pagination. This recipe requires jQuery, handlebars, and our QED server so we got something to test with. I'm going to head on over to the book's webpage, webdevelopmentrecipes.com, and download a copy of the QED server. Now that we have our QED server downloaded, we can go ahead and open it up in our Finder window. <clears throat> I'm on Mac OS X using Safari, and it unzipped the folder for me. You can see that we have a few files here, including the server sh command. This starts up our server for us. Let's go ahead and get that started. I'm going to open up my terminal and change directory into my downloads where I have my QED server. And we'll run the server command to test it out. Now I see the server started. We can go view it in our browser. And we see that it's working. Well, now we can get started generating our files. We stop our server here, and we list out the directories in there. We see we have a public folder. This is where we're going to work in and put all our files. I'm going to use the TextMate editor to edit my files. Right now, I have nothing in there. I'm going to need a few files to work with. So I'm going to create a new file called products.html to be our products page. I'm going to create a uh, endless pagination CSS file, so we have something to style our page with, and then an endless pagination JavaScript file, so we have some place to put our JavaScript. Let's get started working on our products HTML page. First off, we're going to put some boilerplate code in from the book source control. You can see we have our style sheet link and our JavaScript link, also the libraries for handlebars and jQuery. Next we're going to add a content div in order to place our content from the web server that will render out with handlebars, and then a image tag for a spinner GIF. You can go ahead and pick up a spinner GIF for use in your own project at ajaxload.info. Next I'm going to add some styling to our endless pagination CSS. Here we're going to force the font size really big just to show this working and that it pushes text to the next page. Now we can add our JavaScript here. I've gone ahead and pasted it in here, but I'm going to walk through it with you. First we start off with a, a variable to keep track of the current page. Then we go to our function, which actually uses handlebars to append information to the page. Then we can see that we have functions for generating a URL to get the next page worth of data from our backend. We have a function that actually calls that URL. And then we can update our content with response from it. We can check to see if we're ready for the next page and if the spinner is visible. And lastly, we make a call to get the next page to kick everything off. So we'll force a call to our get next page function, which we have up here on line 28. With all these things in place, let's go over and check out our page and see it working. I'm going to head over refresh my page and it loads so fast it's getting the data back from the server. It's a little hard to see in development here but it's making calls. We can go ahead and inspect our element to see this working using our timelines functionality looking at network requests. I'm going to refresh the page 
You can see then as we scroll, we get more network requests going through and verifying that everything is working. Thanks for stopping by and watching this screencast. If you enjoyed this screencast, please pick up your copy of Web Development Recipes today from the Pragmatic Bookshelf. And on behalf of Brian, Chris, Mike, and myself, I'd just like to say thank you for your support and taking the time out of your day to watch this screencast.